Hey there, this is Miss Caitlin from Bebo Kids Art Academy, and I'm here to tell you about the Around the World series, where we visit the seven continents of the world. Now, today we are going to be checking out Antarctica, the coldest continent on Earth. In fact, we're going to be taking a look at the South Pole today. In this project, I wanted to just give you a little sample, a little taste of what our projects are usually like in our Around the World series. Now, I'm going to go ahead and switch to my desk and tell you a little bit more about what we're going to make today. So here is what we're going to create. We're going to make a picture of the South Pole, specifically something that you can see outside of the Edmundson Scott South Pole Station. There are actually people living in the South Pole. Can you believe it? So for this project, I'm going to do some of the coloring with you, but mostly I'm going to concentrate on how to draw this just so that you can have um, the room to create color schemes how you like. And also this is just a sample. It's just to give you a little taste anyway. So for this project, if you want to make it exactly like me and the colors that I used, I use a pencil and eraser to draw. I later, after I've painted everything in with watercolor and colored things in with color pencil, I go in with a white paint pen to write in the South Pole and the location down at the bottom. My white paint pen happens to be very shiny, so it's metallic. Isn't that cool? You can add snowflakes, you can add shine onto the actual South Pole, whatever you like. But I'm going to go ahead and get my space ready to draw for you. I have my paper right underneath. Um, our example today. And while I'm getting that ready, and maybe while you're getting your paper ready, I'll tell you a little bit about what is the South Pole. So the South Pole is actually the Earth's, uh, a point where the Earth's axis and surface meet. It's the southernmost place on the planet that you can go. It happens to also be the coldest place. The South Pole is actually colder than the North Pole. So I'm going to go ahead and just Leave this over here so that you can kind of see the example of what we're going for, and I'm going to draw right here. Now, on your piece of paper, uh, since this is a piece with watercolor on it, you might want to use a paper that can handle watercolor. So watercolor paper, Bristol paper, something that can really withstand a lot of color uh, like that. Now, you're going to see me draw with a Sharpie, not because I want you to draw with a Sharpie, but because I need to make sure that you can see what I'm drawing. I want you to use a pencil and eraser as I show you these steps, okay? So after you've turned your paper vertical so that it's tall, we're going to draw in this little border, which kind of serves as the ground for the South Pole. So I want you to start on the side of your paper towards the bottom, and you're going to draw a big wavy line upwards. Now at this South Pole station, there are usually only about 50 people manning it. And otherwise, that's pretty much all the life there is out in the middle of the South Pole. It's stationed right in the middle of the driest, coldest place on Earth. Uh, so much so, life doesn't really, can't really survive there. For the pole itself, this is going to be a little bit easier to draw if we draw in the very top of the pole first. So I want you to go right about here on your paper, and you're going to draw a circle. We're going to be drawing the pole a little bit at a slant, a bit in perspective today, almost as if we're looking up from it on the ground. Then you're going to draw a sort of sideways rectangle. We're looking for something kind of like this. Now, of course, actually in real life, this is more of a circular piece that's underneath uh, that orb on the pole. But from our perspective, it's going to look a little bit like a rectangle today. We'll just go super simple with it. All right, and now we're going to draw two diagonal lines that are kind of coming in towards each other, but not by a lot. So you're going to start underneath, and you're going to draw a diagonal line down, and a diagonal line down. All right, now the South Pole is pretty cool. It has these little stripes on it, uh, so we're going to go ahead and draw those in too. So we want, let's see, how many lines? One, two, three, four lines to create. One, two, three, four, five stripes. So you're going to go to the pole and you're going to draw one, two, three, four evenly spaced lines as best as you can. And this is going to give us one, two, three, four, five stripes. Now you can add this part in in pencil if you want, but it's penciling in where we want the little highlights to go because this uh, globe that's on top of the South Pole, or rather literally the pole, is see-through. It's like glass. So you can draw in like a circle, one below, a crescent moon shape. You can even add in some other curved lines to kind of just show where light is going to be bouncing off in places that you would need to fill in. 
Now, at the station, there are actually flags that are posted around the South Pole. These are different countries uh, that have like claims to territory in Antarctica or people that are a part of the research here. Now, these flags, we have to draw them in sort of a diagonal. Let's start with the easiest ones, which we can't really see, that are off on the side here. So just go to the side of the paper. You're going to draw two diagonal lines out, move over a little bit, two diagonal lines out, move over. Now they're starting to straighten out a little bit. Think of it kind of like the rays of the sun. So you're going to go over to about here. You're going to draw a straight line, or rather a diagonal line up as best you can. If you need to turn your paper in order to draw these more comfortably, please feel free to do so. You never want to be in an uncomfortable position when you're drawing. Now, we're going to see a bit of this flag, and it's also going to help you place the flags better if you know how far apart that they need to be. So in order to see this flag, which is the British flag, you're going to draw a line out, a line down, and it's covered up a little bit by the pole, but you're going to draw a line in. So you're kind of making like a rectangle. Now, we can't see some of the flagpole that's behind our south pole here. That's the Australian flag. So you're just going to draw diagonal line up, diagonal line up. And you're going to see part of that rectangle again. We can see the next flagpole right here. So you're going to go to the bottom. You're going to draw a diagonal line up, diagonal line up. Rectangle, that's the United States flag. And then you can draw another diagonal line out. Remember, they're kind of shifting as we go across the page. Now, if you have room to draw in some of the other flags, that's great. You can do so. You're probably going to see a little bit of the corner of this flag right here after all. So you can draw a little corner in there. And then you can go ahead and draw in the designs on the flags. Now, for the United States flag, you are going to have to try your best to fit in the 13 stripes. You can try your best to fit in the 50 stars, but it's okay if you can't fit all of them in. But try your best with the British flag as well as um, the British part of the flag on the Australian one. And you can add in the Southern Cross. Now, you can write in right now, if you'd like, the title of the place that we're visiting today. South Pole Station, or you can just write the South Pole. If you want to write in all of the enormous name for the research station, you can, but I'll just focus on writing in the South Pole today. I'm going to write it in cursive, feeling a little fancy today. So we'll put the South And now, once you have all of these different parts, you can begin to fill things in. Again, I'm going to just be focusing on showing you how to draw this today, which here we go, but you can take your time filling things in with a watercolor and color pencil. Now, some quick tips when using watercolor and color pencil. I highly recommend you use your watercolor first. Use it to fill in big spaces like the background and the area down here that would technically be snow and ice. You can use it to fill in like the shine on the globe and different parts of the pole. For the flags, they are actually done in color pencil as well as the flag poles, just so that um, I can have better control over those little details. You can use the white paint pen to add in shine to the pole and you can even write out the letters or the words for the station that we visited today with that white paint pen. Now I'll leave you with one last fact about the South Pole, specifically the South Pole Station. They are kind of all alone out there at the South Pole. In fact, the people at the station have to have all of their supplies in before the winter strikes because winter in Antarctica is six months long and it's really, really intense. It's kind of hard to travel there in the winter. And to keep them warm during the winter, because again, that weather is so intense, the entire station runs on... Um, energy from three generators that run on jet fuel, just to give you an idea of how powerful they need to be. All right, you guys, so I hope you enjoy filling in your picture of the South Pole today, and I hope you had fun creating this project with me. If you would like more around the world classes with more detailed instructions where I do the coloring with you, and we talk about way more facts and learn about many more countries, you can go ahead and check out BeboKidsArtAcademy.com and look for our course rentals. I'll try and leave that information in the description too. 
All right, you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and I hope to see you all again very soon. Bye for now, everyone.